Uh, welcome to Bending Podcast uh, in Driving Humanity Forward and Green Paradox, episode number seven, with the title of Multiple Pathways to Achieve Transportation Sector Carbon Neutrality in Asia. Uh, this is uh, in line of the previous episode, episode six, which we encourage uh, other parties to join our conversation and today we are fortunately we are fortunate to have a very distinguished speak, speaker here uh, Pa Indra from Toyota Daihatsu and then joining us today also uh, City Assess Director Budami and today the moderator will be Pak Kostup uh, highlighting or uh, controlling the conversation. So please, Pa Kostup, uh, you can start to introduce uh, our guest today. Thank you, Eka. Thank you, Pa Eka, for the uh, opportunity. So today is really an interesting session because we have with us Pa Indra coming from Toyota Daihatsu uh, Engineering Manage- and Manufacturing Center from Thailand. Uh, Pa Indra has been working with Toyota and he has been working with the various technologies and he's a distinguished speaker and he speaks about the carbon neutrality in various forums. So we are very fortunate enough to have you today and we would like to see uh, and discuss about the carbon neutrality and the approaches to go carbon neutral uh, in Asia particularly. Uh, interestingly, we also have Budami with us, uh, who's the director Hello. for yeah, <laughs> from uh, CTSS. And today's introduction is uh, her introduction. We have already seen that, but today's interaction will be more from going carbon neutrality and how it is affecting the transdisciplinarity and also creating a sustainable future. So I will ask Pahindra to present us, uh, go forward with this presentation and post the presentation, we can have a subsequent discussion on the presentation bit and also if any queries are there we could address that as well uh, over to you Pahindra Budami before Pahindra starts would you like to add something on that no I'm, yes. I'm I just I just can't wait for uh, Pahindra's presentation <laughs> okay so let's just go forward okay, okay. all over to you Pahindra <laughs> okay thank you very much uh, uh and uh once again good afternoon to everyone Budami thank you for inviting me to this uh, very I think a uh, very good platform to share and uh, the same concern and uh, to to really have a, a you know a cross functional or transdisciplinary which is uh, i think in today's world this is uh, that we need uh, in order to solve all the kind of problems that we are facing uh, in the today's world and thank you very much for Akusto uh, because uh, in, initially he uh, contacted me and uh, offering me this platform, how we're going to, you know, uh, talk and then share what our, are the views, especially from transport and sector, because, uh, you know, I've been working with Toyota since I was graduate under, uh, from the university. So it's now is, I think, 21st years I work as an engineer. And uh, this, uh, and also uh, lately, I think the, for a couple of uh, maybe five, six years, I'm more involved in the discussion of carbon and even safe Indonesian, uh, how to say, uh, transportation sectors of taxation scheme, which is finally from the October 16, um, maybe if uh, you're aware, we are moving from the uh, I think the CC base, engine size yeah. capacity base, and body type. I think Indonesia is very unique because we we base our tech base on the body type. I think no yeah. countries in the world <laughs> apply such, uh, uh, you know, uh, regulation, uh, yeah. regulation because uh, I think it's very unique because sedan and in Indonesia seems a very expensive car. Uh, even uh, many people asking to me, Pahindra, why sedan is so expensive? <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's a, uh, sometimes it's legacy. I think a few years back, uh, sedan, people see people, uh, you know, people who have sedan is a kind of uh, uh, very rich people. 
and only certain people in the community or, or in the society able to uh, to buy sedan. So and for that very uh, pre reason, and Indonesian government set up the taxation based on the body type. So mm -hmm. I think I. And finally, uh, this year, uh, 16 October, uh, we are moving away from that uh, structure and the, the new regime is already based on the carbon. So the lowest the carbon and the lowest the tax. So I, and also one of the big changes is we increase the tax from 10% to 15% uh, minimum uh, in order to create you know, cross subsidy uh, within the technology inside the CO2 base. So, so this is, uh, I think we can discuss uh, another session if we, uh, somebody interests, uh, what is the, the, the background behind the scenes, the moving hmm. Indonesia taxation. Sure so today as, uh, uh, as the title, uh, let me share my screen. So the title is, uh, <laughs> sorry for the, the, the date. Actually, I also uh, plan to have this uh, discussion on 20, eight next week uh, in another event. So I, I, and I think the first time uh, is uh, I convey this material today. So uh, I think uh, it, it also a very good platform to really share what we have views on this uh, uh, carbon neutrality, especially in the transport sector. Because I, uh, if I think everyone aware that transportation is also one of uh, uh, key sector, which is very hard to abate sector. If we read the many uh, scientific reports uh, or journal or uh, uh, even many, many uh, like uh, white papers, um, people saying that the transportation is one of the key sector, which is very hard to abate sector. I think it's because uh, it's very much involved, uh, not only the technology side, but also the social and infrastructure. So later on, I think we can touch upon this one a little bit. So before we start, uh, let me share uh, to you a little bit about Toyota. So I think I saw in the previous uh, podcast, I think Paeko and Paeka uh, already discussed about sustainable development goals. And Toyota also believe that uh, we need to play a big role in order to achieve SDG. So uh, to, to move us, uh, to move the company and also stakeholders around Toyota uh, to achieve that sustainable society, uh, we need to strengthen our ability uh, in order to create new values. So this is that uh, Toyota is aspired to challenge ourselves toward the future. And uh, of course, uh, in order to do that, we need also to, at the same time strengthen our competitiveness because if we are not competitive, then we will lose our customer's mind. So this is uh, the philosophy that uh, Toyota would like to uh, moving forward uh, to achieve what I think we are uh, uh, thinking is uh, related to the sustainable society. But at the same time, we also aware that uh, the customers uh, or the society itself have a very profound changes, especially in uh, our lifestyle. You can see during COVID, I think it's a very uh, good example how the changing of lifestyle is profoundly uh, shifting from maybe the BAU uh, before uh, we have the COVID. Uh, until today, where we have the hybrid uh, working environment, we have uh, another uh, digital technology coming. And uh, of course, I think toward the Glasgow, uh, in, it will be happen in next month. Uh, so environmental issue is also very, very much drive all industry, all governments in order to really uh, put all our attention toward the, these environmental issues. And of course, uh, technological innovation uh, at some point also become very big enabler uh, in order to uh, create the new opportunity or even to the, the customer needs uh, towards uh, their uh, lifestyle. So 
this average diversifying customer needs. So as a company, we need to be agile. And uh, Toyota is uh, very committed in order to always uh, be in the forefront of uh, this uh, uh, need, uh, uh, customer need satisfaction. So our reward, it, of course, it will be the customer's mind. But again, we also need to respect the individual societal needs, environmental issues. And also in the big cities, we also facing a lot of problems with urbanization. So this also uh, become our foundation and then change our company from auto manufacturing. At Toyota is now is a become mobility company. So our president, Akio Toyota said, we are now a mobility company. We are not only you know, a car producer company, but what we really are is we are uh, part of the mobility itself. So this is the another factor that Toyota is uh, really committed. And uh, if we go going deeper and then in the nutshell, so what is our customer in society? What they really need towards our cars, our product? So, and... Uh, with that, uh, you know, many uh, disruption in all sectors, we have a very divergent uh, uh, disruption. And uh, as a car manufacturer, we uh, realized that the car itself, car industry itself is facing very profound transformation. And we believe uh, it's only comes in once in 100 years. Since the Henry Ford uh, uh, invented the Model T, and then until now, we believe this is the time where cars industry need to have a big, big transformation. So what this transformation is translated is translated into the, we need to provide new values and the graphs change for the business expansion uh, while achieving our uh, ideal situation or our goal is to create sustainable mobility. And, uh, so in order to achieve this, the formula that the Toyota is uh, now considering is uh, we need to have ever better car uh, as our philosophy at Kaizen. We need to pr produce the ever better uh, product to, uh, in order this product is become beloved for our, uh, by our customers. And at the same time, we also embrace the carbon neutral technology, the information and the intelligence. So using these three pillars, we use uh, as uh, key drivers toward our strategic shifting. So, so this is uh, what also uh, being uh, broadly discussed within the organization. And in, in, indeed, we also have a very transform, a big transformation internal Toyota, uh, not only the structural reform, but also many, many reforms that now undergoing toward this uh, profound transformation. And uh, in order to provide new values to customers, so we need to really embrace the multiple pathways. So I think this is a very debatable because Toyota, some people said, oh, you are too big to fail. And uh, Toyota is sometimes too stubborn to move to uh, EV technology, for example. But because we think that uh, in the uncertainty situation, like, you know, uh, at this point, because we are facing challenging in terms of environment, we have facing challenging in terms of energy availability, as we discussed earlier, so what we really need is not the single uh, solution. We cannot have a single solution. We need to have multiple pathways technology in order to bring us in the certain manner to achieve what we are really want. Of course, we understand we don't have planet B, then we need to put all efforts to achieve the goal and to maintain the earth temperature below 1.5 degree. So uh, this is one that I think sometimes misunderstood. So why Toyota is not going all the way to EVs? Because we believe that the customer has uh, several needs. They have different background, they have different needs, they have different situation that they need to deal in the daily basis. So in order to do, to support them, we need to provide the tech and uh, many technologies 
and suit them uh, with the, the customer lifestyle. And uh, a little bit deeper toward the CO2 emission. So in Toyota, we don't see only tank to wheel. We need to see the emission from the life cycle itself. So uh, we start from the materials and uh, part manufacturing. So before it's assembled in the, our production line, the parts need to be made. And most uh, in Toyota itself, 80% is made by our suppliers. We don't produce 80% of our, our parts in the vehicle production by ourselves. So we work with our supplier. The supply chain is, has a very big role in this uh, as a, uh, a life cycle uh, construction. And also in order to make all this become reality, we need the energy. Uh, and for that uh, reason also, we need to also see from where the energy that we are using to produce the material, the parts, the vehicle itself. And finally, also during the usage condition, the uh, wheel to wheel also need to be considered. And finally, the disposal. So. Uh, in order to uh, really achieve the CO2 reduction, what we really need is to have the life cycle assessment. We don't want only to see the tank to wheel or wheel to tank, but also from start from the materials until the vehicle is uh, finished, uh, utilized by the customer and ready for disposal. So this kind of view make us uh, believe that we need to have multiple pathways. Otherwise, it's very difficult to have the uh, carbon neutrality or net zero emission uh, in order to achieve uh, the target of uh, 1.5 degree. So this is the view of Toyota. We don't want to see only from, a, for example, tape pipe, but we need to see from the whole life cycle assessment. And uh, of course, we have the strategy. So what will be our encompassing uh, in order to uh, achieve the goals. So we are the one of the OEM, which is produced 10 million vehicles globally. Uh, now is, I think we are number one, followed by Volkswagen. And for us, uh, we need to combine the technology uh, and social infrastructures into our products. So this is the three combination that we cannot separate. So we need to really encompassing all the efforts to the product, which is finally used by the customer with the technology behind that. And also importantly, the social infrastructure to support that usage, to support the customers. So we, we cannot see just push type technology. You know, we have the market driven or even technology driven, but in Toyota, we need to have the product technology and social infrastructure driven uh, ecosystem in order to achieve uh, the sustainable mobility. So, and uh, we are truly believe that we cannot disconnect between the resources and the energy. So Toyota will also put all the efforts that we can do into the re readying the social, social infrastructures that will support the carbon neutrality in the mobility. So this too is, uh, we cannot take it for granted. We need to have to be there, to be really uh, actively involved to, to create the society to, and the social infrastructure to be ready for this carbon neutral uh, mobility. So we need to see, uh, as I said before, the, uh, from life cycle uh, uh, as a whole, is a need to be holistic, not cannot only see the tailpipe, but also we need to see from where the energy is used, what kind of primary source we are using, and so on and so on. So this is the, something that we really need to be shared across the community that uh, as a Toyota, we don't see only a single solution. There is no silver bullet on this one. We need to have all the multiple pathways in order to achieve these uh, goals. And uh, we imagine that in the futures, for example, two technology is currently, I think, embraced by the automotive industry. 
we believe hydrogen and electricity is not against each other. It can be complementary to each other. You can see in the blue line, this is the electricity uh, cycles. And then the, you know, the, uh, and the other side, the below part is uh, the cyclus of hydrogen. And also we also can still rely on some of fossil fuels because we still have the unit in operation running around our, ourselves in daily basis. Uh, in Indonesia, I think by today is uh, for the four wheelers or more is around 13, 14 million vehicles is already used by everyone, including us uh, in daily basis. And also this is to be, can be harmonized together. So we need, we don't need to, you know, really compare which one technology is the better against the other. But as a Toyota, we see the future society with the diversification of energy sources which is, I think, at some point, it can bring the most benefit to the society. And for example, that this is uh, that we are now working on. Uh, in Asia, we know that palm oil is one of a very key uh, product. And then uh, uh, let's, let's put example in Indonesia. I think IPB is one of the very respected university can play a major role on, on this one because we can see that the, the inclusive and the green, it will be the key for the future. With the palm industries, we think there are so many ways that still need to be optimized. For example, that now we are trying try to really realize the palm trunk waste. Because when I talked to Professor Tatang uh, of ITV, I think one month ago, and I said, uh, but Prof. Tatang, I, uh, we want to utilize this palm trunk waste because we, we learned that uh, uh, the, oil, the palm oil fund uh, agency, they have a budget in the, and every year in order to renewal the palm itself, especially for the... Uh, small farmers uh, palm oil uh, which is available in Indonesia and we when the, we consider the the coverage area of uh, the palm uh, plantation in Indonesia we have around nine million hectares and uh, if we just think the total lifetime of palm is uh, around 25 years so in a yearly basis we need to uh, renew or replant around 400,000 hectare a year. So that's number I, I, I got from Pro Professor Tata. And if we don't do anything, the palm trunk is just become a waste. So we need to do something. And uh, the technology is ready actually. So we can extract the molasses inside the palm trunk and then using the technology developed by Toyota using our yeast, uh, we can improve the yield of ethanol. And also after we do that process, the squeeze residue, this is mm, consists a lot of cellulose and we also can convert uh, into the second generation ethanol, the decellulose into the ethanol as a liquid fuel as well. And even if we cannot do that uh, due to some economic consideration, we can use that to, to be the pelletizing we can use it for tablet and we can use a solid fuel, which is can be also used a coal combustion in the uh, coal power plant, for example. And uh, if we can use that and combine with uh, maybe hydrogen, the green hydrogen later on in the, uh, we can produce from the uh, uh, electrolyzers. So we can create the fissure from uh, uh, fuel, which is also e-fuel then it also can be part of the future's uh, uh, multiple pathways uh, solution. Even we can also do the gasification and synthetic fuel, we can directly came up with a uh, piece of truck fuel or e-fuel in this case. But Indonesia now is only doing this portion, the fame only. So actually we can use a lot of uh, uh, PET. We need to find the optimum fat and also how it will be impact to the, to the environment. So I think CTSS can be also the 
be a part of this discussion. And uh, we are really hope that uh, as Asia, like in Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, where we have a lot of resources of, uh, from agriculture's residue, then we have the technology of second generation ethanol that also can be drop in fuel. The meaning of drop in fuel is a very key because we still can use the existing infrastructures. Because in order to save one infrastructure in the energy sector is not easy because the is very much depend on the investment. So if we can use the existing infrastructure, it will be very much beneficial for the society. This is one of the very key examples that now Toyota is working on. And we really need to envision this for futures. So not only EVs, but we also have other options in order to uh, achieve not only green, but also at the same time, inclusive for the society itself. And uh, also for about XEV. So sometimes uh, I got a question. Okay, we understood that Toyota want to diversify. So what about the XEV itself? So XEV for us, we believe this will be one of the technology that really can bring a game changers to the uh, automotive or even the transport sector. And for that, we imagine that the engine only mode, the you know, models will be phased out by 2025. I think it's still very challenging for us, honestly. And, uh, but other than that, we will provide all the electrified models that we have the option and also this uh, dedicated electrified uh, uh, model as well. And uh, so how are we gonna do that? So it's all start by the uh, technology, what we call Toyota hybrid system. Toyota hybrid system is the very fundamental technology that we have. It been sells or, uh, you know, to the market since 1997. And from that very core technology, we can expand to other sector or area. Like even we can make car accelerate, uh, you know, sports car based on hybrid. Even in Le Mans, 24 hours, our hybrid technology is already, uh, you know, in the forefront. I think we have the three years in a row uh, become a winner in the Le Mans 24 hours, which is un, you know, unimaginable before. Why the hybrid technology finally can compete in the sports car? Also, now we are considering to hybridization of big truck, which is some market like US, Australia, they really need this kind of trucks. And, for, and we need to also reduce the footprints of this model. Or of course, we need some customer which is need the high end and we also need to provide for them. And for Indonesia, for emerging market, we also bring this technology to improve the fuel efficiency and also the cost and driving performance at the same time. So until September this year, we have been selling almost 18.1 million. So what is the meaning of 18.1 million hybrids? So it means in every car, we have two electric motors. So in total, we have 36 million electric motors worldwide. It's already in operating. We have the accumulation of knowledge, the technology, even to put a battery where sometimes Toyota is being created criticize about this one. We have experience to sell 18 million units of battery. So it's not a new thing for us. And we strive to achieve this uh, level. And also the inverters, the electronic controls, the regenerative braking, all uh, this experience uh, become our enormous accumulation of technology and know-how, which is, I think, far beyond others OEM. So, and also we have dedicated engineers uh, to, to work for this technology. So me and we are really committed on this one and all the spending of the investment. Also, we still uh, have a very much focus on, on these three core technology. We need to develop the new motor, which is maybe less uh, rare earth component. Also the battery, how we gonna make sure there is enough uh, rare earth or even rare material to be able to mine and produce. 
and what will be the inverter efficiency. All these core technology is uh, become a core in order to uh, achieve more electrification in the future. So just, uh, you know, uh, put up thought about uh, the comparison between hybrid and the EV. So I always say this to, to, you know, to all my colleagues and also my student at university. So we need to really use the resources efficiently. If we see the comparison about the battery, hybrid, we need the battery, lithium ion as well. And the EV also, we use the same sound, the same, but the main difference is about the size. In the average EV, I think these days, uh, people think if EV need to be around minimum 50 kilowatt, but, but for hybrid, we only need 0 0.8 kilowatt. So if we use the same amount of resources, we using all for BEV, then only one people can improve the emission, can reduce the CO2 emission by using only, uh, you know, quite amount of battery resources, 50 kilowatt. If we use this same amount of battery, 50 kilowatt to this hybrid, so we can see how many people can, you know, contribute to the reduction of uh, CO2 emission with the same amount of resources, 50 compared to 0 0.8. So in hybrid, we can improve the fuel economy. It's around 50%. So if just, just a simple math, for example, we have a 50 people here. If these 50 people can improve their efficiency or reduce the carbon around 50%, so 25 people is already in the zero uh, footprint of CO2 emission, while if we are using for BEP, it's only one people. And most of the passenger cars, only 20% of the time it will be used. The 80% the of the time will be stay at one location, either is parking at home or office. So this map or this economic of scale is really make a difference. So if we were talking about game changers, we need to talk about mass adoption, practically mass adoption. So that's why we believe the utilization of resources is also one of very key industries. I think Ms. Pakostop uh, already uh, have a lot of discussion toward how we're gonna use the resources, uh, which is not infinite. This is a finite uh, resources. And it's also at some point is jeopardize the environment. And also, what is the meaning of the uh, more and more electrified vehicles? So as I said before, the battery need rare metals. We need the nickel, we need the lithium, we need the cobalt, mangan, and other aluminum. So these resources, we need to get it from the earth, the planet A. But with the increase of electrified vehicles mean the resources become shortage at some point, what happened now in microchip? I think uh, we know that the technology, the difficulty, it's also now facing by all auto industry. So if we don't do it right, uh, and, and end of life of battery, if this we just discard it, taken for granted, it's become waste. So we cannot utilize this anymore. So what we do in Toyota, we introduce what we call three R. Uh, rebuild, reuse, and recycle. So this uh, approach is really need to be, uh, you know, uh, in place when we're talking about electrification. Without such a management, I think we will facing many problems, especially related to the waste. And last slide before closing. Uh, at the end, whatever the technology, whatever the, you know, the advertising we have, or even the government driving policy, at the end, the, the customer will decide or the market will decide everything. Then for that particular reason, we need to have more than one choice. This is definitely, I think from Toyota Bueno Pew is a key in order to achieve a carbon neutrality because not all this gentlemen 
have the same needs, the same situation, the same, you know, uh, buying power, for example, when we're talking about affordability, for example. So we need to have multiple choice, multiple pathways for them to really can contribute to the uh, carbon neutrality. And the last slide. Uh, so as a Toyota, we need to have ever better cars. We want to enrich the communities with the three pillars, carbon neutral technology, intelligence, and information. I think that's all what I can uh, share today. And uh, hopefully we can have a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much, Pakustu. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Paindra. Paindra. Uh, for the amazing presentation and quite insights like what Toyota has been doing in terms of going carbon neutral. Uh, few quick thoughts, as you rightly said, uh, it's not only one one thing which would be the, uh, let's say like, it's not only the my way or the highway kind of thing. So we need to yeah. have multiple things so that we address the various customer needs and various yeah. use cases. Uh, Ibu Dami, I would like to bring you on the uh, discussion <laughs> part. You have been patiently listening. Uh, would like to get your thoughts and... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, th thank you, Pat Kostov. I've been listening and then thinking and then imagining the future. You know, it's like, okay, it's amazing. So, Pat Kostov, thank you so much. And Pat Indra, uh, thank you for the uh, lovely presentation, uh, thought provoking presentation. Pat Indra, uh, as I listen to you, mm -hmm. um, something comes to my mind and to my heart. I, I, I love the, the quotes that you're using. You know, start your impossible you know, that's nice um, and then also you actually you you're, you're talking about um, what, what one of your slide is writing about um, um, challenging the future okay I really like this I I understand that um, the private sector has a very important role um, to shape the future. In fact, I think all our future is actually being invented by technology that is owned by, by the private sector. So I was wondering, as I listened to you, I was wondering, how far are you going to use this power to shape the future? Um, because, okay, also in your slide, you wrote down about the customer needs. There's an ever, um, ever diversified uh, customer needs. And we know that humans has a want, an mm -hmm. everlasting want. Yeah. 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 So if you follow what the customer, the consumer wants, it will ever, you know, you can, it can be destructive. So when you talk about challenging the future, shaping mm -hmm. the future, um, how are you actually doing this? Are you just following what the consumers want? Do you have, are you putting values? Mm -hmm. um, so, so actually, again, as I mentioned earlier, you become a very powerful company because actually you're, you're shaping the future based on your values. Yeah. What, what, what do you think about this? Thank you, Pudang. I think, uh, as I said in the during the presentation, Toyota is the I think the 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 company who start really selling the mass production of hybrid. At that time, in 1997, when everyone not doing that. Ah, okay. Everyone hasn't started it. Guys, yeah. oh, started no, no. it. At that time, ah. we still struggling. Oh, we need to what which path because especially like in US, book, in US, uh, they just need you know, because they have a very cheap uh, gasoline price, for example, or or even diesel price. So mm -hmm. at that time, all the cars which in sell in the US is a very big truck. So maybe mm -hmm. one liter only for one kilometer. So so why wow. Toyota at that time we dedicated ourselves? Uh, we invest a lot. We uh, we struggle a lot to create the vehicles which can be can reach the fuel economy beyond anyone else mm. 
So we, because we believe <laughs> this is the right thing to do for the society. Mm. Okay. So we have the values like uh, our founding fathers, uh, Mr. Toyoda at the beginning when he really set up the company. We need to have contribute to the society with the technology driver. But those also at the same time, we need to also stay on earth, not really, you know, in the practicality matters. Because we also study EVs at that time. Even we yeah. work with Tesla in RAV4 uh -huh. project. I think okay. long, long before everyone euphoria toward EVs. But mm -hmm. when we're talking about social infrastructure, no one cared at that time. <laughs> yeah, could, 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 could you explain social infrastructure as for, yeah. for the for the for, public so they yes, understand yes. what you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. For for example, Bo, in, in EVs, you need we need the charging to, to give the energy. Right. While for the uh, for example, the the uh, uh, how to say oil based uh, uh, economy. We have all infrastructure coming from the well when the people digging oil up to the pump station. Mm. We can imagine how much money we already put in <laughs> into yeah. this infrastructure. Ah. Can we really disregard this infrastructure just it is and just shifting all to electricity? We don't okay. think so. So, and also at that time, when we're talking about uh, charging, of course, Toyota, we cannot say this is only our responsibility to build the car with the charger. So we need other sector players or, or, or uh, ecosystem to, to make that. And by that time, we don't see any government really want to support us in, in you know, developing this EV ecosystem. So, but, but we do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so we do it anyway. And, oh. uh, but finally, yeah, yeah, decision has to be made because we don't see at that time, you know, uh, it will be uh, uh, sustainable for us back in, I think, 20 years ago. Mm. But we see hybrid, I think at some point it can increase the fuel economy. So, for example, Budami ride the car from maybe uh, Jakarta to Bogor and one liter for 10 kilometer. In hybrid, Budami can drive the same car without changing any behavior. Budami mm -hmm. can ride to Bogor with one liter 22 kilometer. Wow. Without ever <laughs> changing any behavior. Yeah, amazing. Budami, but I think the most changing it will be the time Budami go to the pump station. Usually you go yeah. one week, one time, but yep. if using hybrid, you need to go only one month, one time. So, so I think oh, it's very good. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, this, yeah. this kind of uh, thinking way, we believe it should be coming into practicality. What is the infrastructure which support this technology can really, you know, used by most of the people. And at the end, the impact is coming when it's used by scale. Yeah. It's not only used by maybe, you know, uh, head of parliament <laughs> or head by, you know, the head of company. Only few mm -hmm. people can do that. And for us, it's not satisfied satisfaction. Right. So <laughs> I think Pakus do very know well about yes. this. One. What <laughs> yes. we really need is a scale. scale so yes. the scale and practical. Yeah. Without practicality, people don't want to change. So very, right. even, I think a little bit story about automatic transmission. We mm. spent almost 10 years to convince people in Indonesia, please use automatic transmission. But people said, no, 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 no. I don't feel drive a car if I using automatic transmission. Including want... me. Including yeah. me. <laughs> see, see, what? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I said, no, it's not automatic. <laughs> okay, I, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that also, we, we as an auto company, we facing that problem. We need to convince people, this will be improve your fuel economy. We invent the CPT. We do a lot of hours development research in order to bring the practicality at the same time fuel economy. But people said, no, I still want to use uh, safety gear. 
Give one, two, three. And I want to use my left foot. I don't want my left foot just stay there. So, so but but this this is the reality, Budami. So okay. so when we're talking about EVs, we also need to work together with ecosystem. So yes. ah. who will provide the charging? Toyota can do, but we we I think few we can do, but we cannot do Not massively. All. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we cannot do massively. Maybe we can install at every dealers, but mm-hmm. How many dealers we have? Maybe 500s? <laughs> we need to have really, you know, the scale in order to do that. But at the same time, if we just wait, we don't do anything. So we'll sacrifice the future of our generation. Wow. So we you, need but... to reduce. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Thank you. The, 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 we need to do whatever we can in order yeah. to, you know, really improve the fuel economy, what available technology today and in practical manner. So that's why we believe uh, Indonesia is a time to shift to electrification. We agree for that. And, but at the same time, we don't need to, you know, really make a separation between one technology to other technology. At yeah. the end, every people need is different. Uh, for mm-hmm. example, yeah, I, 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 I have my working to home is only 20 kilometer. Oh, in, a, in that sense, I can use EV, small EV with small battery is enough. But some people live in Sukabumi and working in Karawang. So how these people can go to if uh, this uh, very far and they cannot, uh, you know, cover by EV battery. So this is a practicality and then the, the, the social infrastructure to support them is really yeah. need to come together. I can relate to that, Pa. When I was in Jakarta, <laughs> I was staying yes. in Mayoran and my factory in Karawang. So See? <laughs> <laughs> and you had right. budget from, from Chawang to Karawang. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, so it's we can not, cannot imagine you need to fool over because you uh, run of juice. You, you right. don't have charge anymore. So yeah, it's not yeah. really practical in a way. <laughs> sure. But that brings an interesting point, Pahindra. Uh, as you said, let's say like we have to create the future for the generations and uh, for the generations yeah. to come, right? And yeah. Iwudami's uh, question also uh, very meaningful that how do we give it back? How do we, let's say most of the technologies are dr- being driven by say the private sector. Yeah. How can, how does the private sector see the academia participating in this and say maybe what would be the expectations of the academia and the other, you know, uh, the part of the various ecosystem, how do they contribute and co-create? Mm-hmm. And, you know, your thoughts maybe first and then I can take Iwudami's yeah. uh, thoughts as well on this. Yes. So in, in Toyota, I'm, uh, we believe that we need to come as a society together. So in terms of electrification, I work with all the five university in Molina, for example, which is yeah. the the five main universities in Indonesia, which is uh, trusted by the government to really moving forward the electrification. And I, I, we have a special assignment and also contract with them in order to really put the perspective, what is really means of electrification? Mm-hmm. So then, uh, you know, this triple helix uh, kind of collaboration, we believe in that. Even I think we will invite you maybe sometimes in next year, we will open our XEV center in Karawang. I think it's a very Mm -hmm. nice place where we put all the technology in showcase and people can learn from maybe kindergarten up to the uh, maybe university professor there. And if they have any idea to really make the practicality or the social infrastructure so we can discuss there. So okay. we, we, we believe that we cannot do alone. Toyota is one company. We need to all other players together right. with us, including I make the same speech actually every month to all suppliers. So I right. invite them. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of online meeting. So mm. <laughs> I can be <laughs> anywhere, even though I'm stuck in Thailand, but I can work, talk and then discuss with all the Toyota suppliers in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. I've been mm-hmm. talking with them because some question is, what about our product? Pa? If everyone mm-hmm. go to EVs, 
what will be our business? Uh, so I only make exhaust pipe. I don't have any knowledge or know-how to produce inverter, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, but so that's why we, if Toyota will be able to develop e-fuel, for example, yeah. or now as we do it now, we use the hydrogen engine where the engine is combust directly inside the internal combustion engine. But the hydrogen we use is a green hydrogen. This is not yeah. brown hydrogen. This is not even gray hydrogen. So we use the green hydrogen using ICE technology. That means we can keep the supply chains along with the engine technology. ICE is not our enemy. Yeah. Our common goal <laughs> is to reduce the carbon. It's right. not to killing the supplier who produce power plug, for example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a so, good point. True. What, what, what about Denso, for example? What, what, for example, I talk a lot with the ISAN. You know, maybe you mm -hmm. know ISAN. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. are mainly the supplier who produce uh, throttle manifold, you know, throttle body, sensor, mm -hmm. EGR, mm -hmm. bulb, all engine parts. And yeah. they said to me, if we go to electrify, what can we do, Pak? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's not easy for us. People just say, oh, it will create new job, new... But is this transformation is required, mm -hmm. you know, very profound change in the organization. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy just, yeah, you should think by yourself. It's not like that. Toyota need to work with the suppliers, our, you know, uh, our network to bring to that level, to that target, then we believe we they cannot do alone. It's not yeah, like some people said, oh, it's, I, you know, like, oh, you will become Nokia uh, because you are not following the trend. Yeah, right. Not everyone can be, uh, how to say, for example, uh, Android, you know? <laughs> so not everyone can be Android. So True. people have, you know, the, the facility, the know-how, the people there, we, we cannot let them just, you know, out of job, out of the blue. So exactly. we need to think with them. We need to come to uh, create a solution together with them. So exactly. this kind yeah. of, uh, you know, uh, discussion, I believe acad academia or university is to play a major role. To, mm -hmm. to bring the discussion on the table to the society. Because sometimes when, when I talk, uh, people just say, ah, this is you, only Toyota talking. So <laughs> I lose the credibility uh, at, at the beginning because uh, ah. it is just you want to maintain your status quo, for example. But it's beyond that. We don't want to, to really, you know, lose. Of course, we are afraid to lose the business. But as I said, 80% of Toyota parts produced by suppliers. If they go bankrupt, <laughs> we also will bankrupt. <laughs> True. So, 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 so that's that. That's kind of you know the auto industry as a whole. We need to see as a holistic, and I do believe with the support of university academia, which has uh, you know very clear perspective on the on the the object, the, the discussion, mm. the topics, it can bring more neutral views. So I, I, I don't want to just, you know, you know, uh, take a black and white. We need to really More have of the some green. consensus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh, but but if, if they're asking, do you really don't want to go electrified? No, no, we have electrification technology. <laughs> we, we, we have whatever you want, even the fuel cell. Mm. So, uh, so we are the forefront also selling fuel cell. But yeah. when I, they're asking me, Indra, can, why you don't bring fuel cell? Mm -hmm. Because I said, I tried to work with Aneka Gas Samator, and mm. they said, uh, "What hydrogen you produce? Oh, we just produce from natural gas." Oh, I said, "No. <laughs> what what <laughs> right. I really want is the green hydrogen. So if you right. can provide green hydrogen, then I will work with you." And <laughs> so, so those kind of discussion is really need to to be, you know, as a, as a community, as a as a so society, we need to bring on the table, and mm -hmm. then let's let's discuss. It's not you know against technology. What is the best for the country? For the especially at the end, who will pay for it? This is customer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not the government it's a, so it's finally the customer will pay. 
I right. think that's uh, my comment on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, Ibudami, you have been listening patiently on this, and I <laughs> really know you have many things to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really like the the way um, when you discuss about the the academia, uh, the private sector. I think um, this this is that there is still something that we need to tie. in or to make become a, a better collaboration between the academia and, and the private sector sure. um, sometimes uh, people see this as a you know like an opposing end okay the mm-hmm. business sector mm-hmm. you're just always just thinking about the profit but I yeah. think when we talk about sustainability yeah and when we talk about the future where we need to be you know transdisciplinary mm-hmm. we work together with the community the private sector yeah. the uh, the government, government yes. it all becomes one and the one. academia hopefully can fill in that role where we can learn from mm-hmm. the private sector what works yeah. and what doesn't work and yeah. then your experience is very important for the development of the science and the knowledge mm-hmm. at the university mm-hmm. so what we teach at the university is not just theory, but yeah. also very adapting, adaptive uh, mm-hmm. to what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. And in this way, uh, the students uh, that learned from us is also actually learning from what work and what doesn't work from you. So yeah. we, we, need, we, need, we need to forge this partnership in the future, closer yeah. link between the private yeah. sector and the academia. Hopefully we can do that with I love you. <laughs> yeah. So that brings I, an interesting perspective, Pandra Budami, if I may permit. Uh, see, right now the auto sector is being say if we see the total pie, auto sector is only eleven percent or eleven point eight percent of the problem. But if we use this knowledge and use it as an innovative tool or a thinking method in the academia, we can use the approach to solve the balance eighty eight percent. So you know mm-hmm. the overall intent of going green and having various ways and multiple ways to control control carbon in various aspects can mm-hmm. be fast tracked, and there yeah. could be a better alignment in terms of you know going carbon neutral in not only automotive industry but the various industries which we have in uh, on this planet A, and as yeah. Paaf Indra rightly said, there is no planet B, and the enemy <laughs> is carbon. we need yes. to align ourselves and see how we you know collaborate and co-create on these pathways i will just bring in pai ka and pai ko they have been listening patiently over the last hour to just take their comments and then we can proceed on to the next point first yeah. pai ko okay uh, thank you paindra very uh, interesting uh, presentation and explanation and i actually i like very much on the uh, your explanation about uh, how toyota care about the uh, suppliers which is producing 80% of your components and, and this brought me to the previous discussion what i, I have with uh, pakosto about uh, being uh, having coexist coexistence so mm-hmm. we we coexist uh, yeah. with the suppliers uh, yeah. and as well as our customers and uh, although some of us have heard that whatever toyota make people will buy but toyota uh, don't don't just make what you want to do you yeah. think about uh, uh, the impact of uh, the partners and so on which is mm-hmm. very interesting and the last slide that you brought about uh, palm and the waste yeah. of uh, uh, palm uh, trunks There is also very interesting whereby an auto industry, which uh, Pak Kostov just now mentioned about, that um, only uh, 12% or, or about 11.8% of the transport is all the, the 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 problem on the climate change. Uh, but Toyota also touching on the the other area whereby uh, it can also contribute on a on a, a better uh, uh, living, a better or greener. Uh, living yeah it's which is uh, something that probably that also can be brought into this platform mm-hmm. and uh, with the the uh, involvement of government uh, better uh, to to have it uh, implemented more and more so that uh, we can have a a bigger impact on this uh, topic okay. 
Agree by call. Mm-hmm. I think it, it, we need to bring more people to the discussion. Yes. And uh, yeah, even I imagine uh, if this kind of forum is uh, much, much more, we uh, can be, you know, uh, spreading out uh, across mm. the communities. Mm-hmm. We, we, we can come to at maybe at some point uh, the consensus. So yeah. we need to have the coexistence. So we, 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 we don't, you know, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, this is the, the only technology uh, which is mm. we are going to pursue. So mm-hmm. everyone, yeah, because, you know, infrastructure, social infrastructure is a very, very uh, difficult to really just disband or disregard mm. something like that. So, you know, how many, for example, fuel tanker <laughs> running on, on the road. Even in my study, I already study how many people working in a gas station and mm. in eight hours see if everyone going to charging and they can do charge at home and all those people need to be out of job. Mm. Yeah. Who right. should think about them? The, the social <laughs> impact is too big. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Government. <laughs> the and, government. and the electrification or hybridization and so on is can be only applied to the new vehicles. Yes. What about the existing one? Can we just let whatever they can do, for example? Mm. So we need to also take care of the existing one. Mm. So what in, in 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 usually in the term we use UIO unit in operation. So yeah. So mm-hmm. so how are we gonna reduce the consumption of UIO? Is there any alternative to UIO? That's why we're coming to drop in fuel concept with the mm. e fuel. We can still use the same infrastructure. We not really put our money to make a you know more investment on that. So mm-hmm. with the ethanol, for example, I think Toyota has technology flexi fuel. We can use whatever percentage of ethanol combined with the gasoline, for example. If you don't have money to buy gasoline, you just buy ethanol. If you have money to buy ethanol, you can you can just buy ethanol. The computer will calculate it itself. Oh, this is the best stoichiometric, and the vehicle will be just some. Uh, but this also can be done for the new vehicle. Sorry, <laughs> but the existing one, at least we can use all the Toyota engine in the global. We already comply with at least E20. So mean if we can replace that 20% of gasoline, uh, then we can reduce 20% of oil consumption. Yeah. into the more renewable. While in countries like Indonesia, India, where people living quite a lot in agriculture sector, then can mm-hmm. be contribute inclusively to that. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> that's the future. So, so then at the same time, we create a new ecosystem for them while not disbanding the existing infrastructure and we also can consider what will be the way out for the unit in operation. Mm. I just uh, finished my course with Indian uh, guys, uh, uh, my colleague in the EV Academy. And mm. uh, I talked to the senior uh, advisor of Asok Leyland. And mm. he gave me a very good hint, uh, Mr. Kristek said to me, Indra, mm. in EV, people what they did sometimes didn't see is the maintenance cost. Yeah. For, for example, in India, I think also in Indonesia, so ICE, we don't see the end of life. Yeah. People can repair the engine, the transmission, but in case of EV, we cannot do repair the inverter, the battery. We need to replace, and this replacement costs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you try Agreed. to find in journal or in research paper, no one see this maintenance cost reality. They just put a sum on that. Mm-hmm. In, in, when we're talking finally the TCO, how many rupiah per kilometer? How many rupee per kilometer? We need to bring up the all maintenance costs. But in case of ICE, we even not see this big amount of maintenance cost. Because what we can do is we can repair. <laughs> Engine program, we can repair. Transmission program, we can repair. But 
But when EV buses stop due to the inverter broke down, need to be replaced by car. Exactly. Very you true. cannot repair inverter. You cannot repair the battery cell. So that will be the game changers. <laughs> so I, I really like him to show me maybe another data. So what really mm -hmm. the difference of maintenance cost? And finally, the TCO is not going to be a parity. Because in Indonesia or India, we do repair yeah. to, to, to extend the vehicle life. But, <laughs> but in EV, you cannot do that. Right. You cannot do the repair. So that's that I think the very, I think I learned a lot on that experience from Asok Leyland. <laughs> true, true. But Pindra, TCO is again a business decision. So it's not yes. a social decision, right? Yes, so, yes, yes. And in, eventually, uh, the TCO would facilitate like or would be responsible for the cost, the end yes. consumer cost, like how yes. it is, yes. uh, why a particular thing is say X rupiah and not, yeah. why not X plus delta X. Yeah. Yes. And if EVs, the TCO is going to go higher up, yes. definitely the X plus delta X would be increasing, <laughs> Yes. which is not realized today, but over the period, once yeah. we see these more and more EVs on the road would be realized. Yes. Right. Yes. I can see Paika smiling and we can <laughs> take his comments. <laughs> Paika. Yeah. Thank you, Pak Kostup. Thank you, Pak Indra, Pak Eko, Budami. Uh, personally, I would not like to touch upon the detail because too many details here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> If I it's okay, it. but it's okay. We can discuss detail also. <laughs> As Pindra said, the devil lies in the detail. Yeah, yeah. The details. The details. yeah. <laughs> if I talk the detail, then I invite the devil coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I would like to do is that, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say uh, this episode, I would like it to be a game changer, eye opener between private sector and academia. So the stigma in my understanding personally in the academia world is that the business or private sector is an entity without heart. <laughs> and then in the private sector, maybe the stigma of the academia is an entity that, how to say, uh, not, not with the intention of hard intention, just entity that moves too much, but does not bring anything to reality. I would say like that. Yeah. So too much theory. Yeah. <laughs> so, but now by Indra, Budami meet and they understand, at least understand each other that business like Toyota is not about only economy. It's not only about profit, but social is also important. Heart is also important. And it plays a very important role in the underlying principle of formulating the business, yes. of making the business become practical. Uh, what Mahindra mentioned in uh, economic scale, business needs scale. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I think we all know that in the world, there is nothing like a uh, black and white. I quote mind also, there is always gray. So the issue is how we can find the gray area together and prosper based on those uh, gray area. And that, I that issue will be all the details that I trying to avoid because I'm trying to get, uh, get the viewers into the perspective that what we are just talking about and in that, if I may go deeper in that perspective, now we, we know that we have a fossil fuel ecosystem to yeah. uh, drive, uh, to uh, create energy that driving transportation. We cannot just abandon, suddenly jump to EV because the social costs, uh, social costs for infrastructure, the behavior chains of the consumer that must be required like Pak Indra very beautifully said that Budami from Jakarta to Bogor, 
maybe one week one time, but with the hybrid only one month one time, feel basically changing the uh, changing the behavior of the customer is it will take time. It it is an incremental yeah. thing to be done. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, but but <laughs> this is my biggest worry point. But in this euphoria of EV, in yeah. this rush to being green, yeah. that I I quote the title of this episode, driving humanity forward and the green paradox. So in this rush to be green, I personally feel that the urgency of the green paradox is not discussed enough about like uh, between Paiko and Paindra, no, discuss about EV. EV, you cannot repair, you must replace. So it means also another disruption to the uh, surface surface station chain yes. and how about the people that are working there so finally i would like to say i would really like ctss be the leader that leads the way meet the uh, private sector and meet the academia and the social bene uh, will benefit everybody will benefit. Like in our uh, previous episode that we mentioned that base, base uh, that will be the val uh, underlying principle is the value of the family that is universal. Or I may quote the US Army Ranger motto, Ranger lead the way, CTSS lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank this you. Is my, right. <laughs> this is my appeal to Budami, and this is also my appeal to Painda. Let's right, right, right. work together, Painda. There's so many things that we can uh, explore together sure. and sure, uh, sure. inform to the society. Like how we, yeah, we started this conversation with the underlying theme of Vasudeva Kutumbaka, which is the world is one family, which is more or less like Bineka Ikatungal. So, <laughs> so it's more of we are one family and we are equally now more and more connected. Mm -hmm. So whatever action happens in any part of the globe, we are party to that. So we are in the same storm, but in different boats. And we have to strive this storm together. Today is just a beginning that we are coming together. That's the first step. As pa, mm -hmm. Indra was also mentioning about being going Kaizen approach. So we are first coming together. We know what problem is we have to face. Maybe it's more of a, like a story. Like seven blind people are seeing the elephant and then trying mm -hmm. to discuss. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then yeah. they come together and then finally see that, oh, that's an elephant, not, that's an elephant. The, <laughs> not the individual part which they have seen. Yes, 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 so yes. Coming together is the start. And that's something we have to build on, see the various perspectives and see how we can collaborate, co-create and coexist in this, yeah. uh, you know, the uncertain, vulnerable yes. and ambiguous yes. world. And we yes. have to strive hard and really hard to come out of this and all these efforts have to be directed so that we go carbon neutral then we we have to remember is carbon and not the ICE and we have to take the measures to control the carbon right yeah I'll just request Budami uh, maybe your concluding remarks and then Pai Indra uh, concluding remarks and Paika can close the call then Budami okay yes thank you um Concluding remarks. The future is here. This is, we need to have a tipping point today so that we can avoid the catastrophe because of, of the climate change. And today through this discussion, I can really feel and I can really see that it is very, it's, it, it, it's possible it will happen the collaboration between the private sector, the academia and the people to strive together to make the future uh, 
bright and to hold on to the sustainability that we need to, to work together towards sustainability. So, so I believe that we can do it. And today is a proof that this is the way and CTSS is ready to, as like I said earlier, to lead the way, inshallah. Terima kasih. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice quote, Bu. <laughs> uh, we will we will follow the way, Bu. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Pak Kostu, Paika, Budami, and Paiko. So for me, is uh, I think it's a very uh, enjoyable today discussion, and uh, as a private sectors and also academician at the same time, because I also lecture at Pancasila University, so. <laughs> So it means uh, I know the both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, every time I bring you know something to the class, I, I try to put all the perspective still in this earth, not going to the Mars yet. So we, we still need planet A. So we, we don't need planet B. Maybe Elon Musk and some somebody else like a Virgin <laughs> Uh, can go there, but most yeah. of us still <laughs> need to safe. stay in front of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, uh, be talking about paradox, yes, of course, many paradox. I agree, Paika. And, uh, but I think, as a Toyota I always say, uh, start your mission possible. We not start with mission impossible. Uh, we st- always talking about mission possible. So what we can do, challenge yourself. And uh, we do believe also, we cannot do alone. So we need the platform to work as an ecosystem because uh, no company in the world can do everything by themselves. So if we need other stakeholders, uh, other supporters, and uh, even to, because an auto company, we work with supply chain and uh, not only uh, Toyota itself, but is the, the, the success of auto industry is also involving many, many aspects coming from raw materials up to the finished product or uh, and also the mobility, because I said we are transforming to mobility. So many kind of mobility we can tackle together. For example, just, just a simple example. Uh, if we see about uh, getting, I think I remember so related one of the, your podcast about, I think Paiko is mentioning about the 12% or comparing to the ways, everything. Yeah. So in terms of mobility, if we can use the digital technology. So the in Indonesia right now, uh, the uh, you know garbage truck, uh, they just come to every house, uh, whatever there is uh, any garbage or no garbage. But with the simple touch of technology, we can make uh, you know routing algorithm. So in a one day with the sensor say, oh this is full, this is not full. So we can make a smart bin only by you know very few sam- you know PLC or Android or whatever. So then we can improve you know, the efficiency. So the truck is only going to the place they need to go in a day. Then can saving a lot of fuel and emission. But mm-hmm. only for that reason, people take it for granted. So, so that's why we need to put the technology and the practicality in. And, and we are state ourselves as a mobility company. We want to be part of the solution. So this kind of discussion, I also want to be bringing together with Especially maybe yeah, yeah, the student, so maybe we can inspire them to really doing. I think a small thing, but it will be impact a lot. Only by taking the the, the waste handling, for example, I think three percent impact was the, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. It's coming from waste, but waste, yes. do we do really something toward waste? I, I don't think so because I still keep seeing the truck coming around and then see oh there's nothing there but they still can go and they what they do is only idling the diesel fuel is you know still burn and then but it's just a simple sensor and then send to the server okay today this is the best route you can go then you don't need to go to this location and it we can improve the you know the efficiency and everything so this kind of mobility in the perspective is, yeah, we can do a lot actually. It's not not only just taking fancy about, oh, this is should be future car or so whatever. We can do apply many technology, the diversion of digital technology and analog technology. We can we can bring, I think, more better future to you know our future future son or or daughter <laughs> or 
or uh, because we need to left them the planet A, I think as uh, maybe much better than what we see right now. So I think that's one of my vision, how we can legacy, you know, leave them with a better world than we live today. So, so we not want to leave them with uh, maybe hard to breathe air, so for example. So it's not really good. We will be responsible for them. It's not them to blame, but we are the one now who's living at this moment, very moment, we need mm. to be responsible and take that as our, you know, social uh, responsibility in order to bring more, a better world for them. So, so that's my plan, final closing purpose. So thank you very much for today. Thank you. Thank you, Pahindra, for that powerful and very, very inspiring statement. So if I have to conclude, then it's basically we need to be responsible for our actions whatever way we are doing it and it's the world and the time that we are in that we have to co-create coexist and collaborate so that we jointly address the problems of climate change thank you Pahindra thank you Budami thank you Paiko and Paika for the wonderful insights and the session today I will request Paika to conclude and thank you very much okay thank you thank you Pa pa uh, Indra, Budami, Pak Eko. Uh, before concluding, I just want to uh, highlight something that uh, referring to Pak Indra regarding the example of the garbage uh, truck, uh, how to re uh, maximize efficiency, how to reduce waste. In the complexity theory that is called uh, making the relation that is necessary. And doing without that, that relation is not necessary. So when you make a simple uh, <clears throat> bin that can communicate, it's actually giving a feedback. Uh, and that is the way to solve any complex system that we take the relation that is meaningful and we uh, yeah, throw away or we discard that relation that is not relevant anymore. So this is a very, actually is a very exciting uh, thing that we can discuss, but it's another issue. Hopefully we can discuss in another time. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, Pahindra mentioned about uh, together, Pahakostup also co-create, collaborate, co-produce. I hope Pahindra will be available with the other platform in CTSS like TTT maybe or ATREF maybe to discuss those issues that is very interesting. So to all the viewers, so uh, thank you very much also. We will try to bring the next episode with a more exciting discussion and more exciting topic for you. Thank you again. Oh, see you, thank you. in the next thank episode. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.